بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا um, It is a pleasure to uh, give this uh, uh, talk uh, to you guys about uh, pursuing residencies in the United States uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, giving this lecture uh, just as a um, introduction to uh, what to do and what's the situation um, of uh, of pursuing residences in the United States. In this uh, lecture, we will be uh, I'll be talking about my personal my own personal experience. We'll uh, discuss a little bit about uh, the the difference and uh, whether you should pursue American versus uh, Saudi board. Uh, whether you should do the training in the United States or uh, here in. Uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about the current situation and uh, and what uh, what to do next. What's going to be the plan? So um, I have been uh, fascinated about uh, going to the to the uh, United States to do the uh, residencies um, uh, since I was in in medical school. Uh, the Ministry of uh, Education, uh, formerly known as uh, Ministry of Higher Education, actually launched uh, the uh, scholarship program, uh, and uh, and the target at that time was to uh, get people to uh, go uh, abroad in general. So Canada, United States, Europe, everywhere. Um, so I was uh, privileged at that time to go uh, to the United States to uh, pursue residency. Um, before that, uh, I, uh, when I graduated, when I was in my uh, internship year, I actually saw that um, this was taken in uh, King Fahad Medical City in Riyadh. Um, the, uh, the available uh, residencies that uh, were available at that time for uh, the local uh, program. Uh, these are this were these were the, the criteria. Uh, for some reason, uh, as as usual, uh, you can actually see that 35 years or older, uh, uh, sorry, 35 years and and, and uh, younger, uh, with a GPA of a minimum 3.5 or 72 percent, except for these residencies, emergency medicine, radiology, and uh, anesthesia, they actually reduced the acceptance uh, uh, rate uh, for some reason. Uh, I'm assuming that the reason was there was a huge uh, shortage for these uh, uh, residencies uh, or for this uh, specialty. And, uh, and this was in 2007. Um, for the non-Saudis, uh, in the past, they, they used to accept non-Saudi in the uh, residency programs in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, in, the, in the Saudi board uh, program. Uh, the uh, things were really uh, easy uh, to do, and uh, the uh, uh, seats were uh, plenty uh, when you compare it to the number of graduates per year. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, if uh, if there is any questions, you can write it in the uh, box in the question and answer uh, box, and uh, it it will be delivered to me, and then I'll I'll take it. Uh, I'll, 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 we'll answer it. We'll try to answer it at the end of the lecture. So, uh, as I said before, uh, I uh, was uh, considering going to the United States. So. Uh, in 2000 and, and uh, since 2003 or 2002 or 2003, I tried uh, to get uh, USMLE uh, oriented. USMLE is the United States Medical Licenses Exam, and it is a three-step uh, program. So I decided to uh, pursue USMLE or uh, pursue residency in the United States, and I decided to uh, prepare for it. Uh, and take the exam in 2005 after my uh, after I finished the basic sciences that I 
um, uh, did in uh, back in in school in in the school of medicine. Uh, also, uh, what I uh, was uh, trying to do is to take uh, clinical experience in either the United States or in um, in Canada, so North America in general. So, I contacted a few. Uh, medical schools and few residency uh, programs when I was in uh, the, the internship. So the, our internship is uh, the seventh uh, year after um, the first year after medical school. So the, the seventh year. So I was uh, privileged to um, uh, be able to do a hands-on clinical experience at uh, St. Michael's Hospital in uh, Toronto, uh, Ontario. And this is in, in Canada. So um, I did uh, a four-week uh, uh, resident uh, uh, elective rotation in in, in the uh, emergency medicine, and then I got uh, this, these uh, feedbacks from my uh, attending physicians, which is what they call consultant physicians, in there. So this is Dr. Ryan, so Dale Ryan. Uh, uh, I. Uh, I also got this from uh, Ross Blundell. Uh, this one, uh, these are, uh, this is from uh, uh, Chris Hicks when he was a, a resident. Um, so um, I spent a, a really good time in, in that uh, uh, hospital. Then I wanted to continue um, my study so I can prepare to get acceptance in the residency uh, program. I, I went to Canada. Um, I went to Canada because uh, the uh, the option for uh, the scholarships were either to pursue residencies in the United States or uh, in Canada, or uh, if you want to prepare for the examination, you can go to the uh, Kaplan Medical, which is a test and preparation uh, center that provides. Uh, online uh, and uh, live lectures and discussions and preparation for the USMLE. So um, I had a good, a really good time in, in Toronto, Canada. Um, then after I got, I, I did my examination, uh, the exam that uh, prepare you to go uh, to pursue residencies in Canada, I was invi invited for an interview in, um, in McGill. Uh, and uh, McGill is in a, in a, in a province called uh, Quebec. Um, so I went for that uh, interview, but um, unfortunately I did not uh, match. So I went back to the United States. And then uh, before that, when I applied to the visa, uh, to go and do my uh, one of the exams that I'm required to do, I was rejected in uh, in the application for uh, the visa. And the rejection uh, reason was that I applied for the visa in a country uh, where I don't have a, a strong ties uh, to, which is uh, Canada. So I went back home, um, and then I got uh, um, I, I uh, applied for the visa, and then I went back. To, to the United States. When I went to the United States, uh, I did my examination. I, uh, I did my examination in uh, the, uh, uh, I, I did, I, I acquired the visa. And then when I, when I got the visa, I uh, uh, could not get uh, the, the, uh, the, the scholarship immediately. So, I had to stay, I, I got stuck in Canada for uh, uh, a few months. And then uh, this is, by the way, uh, one of the uh, ads that I uh, saw in the subway in Canada, which is uh, starting a new adventure. Uh, this was uh, for the nurses in, in Canada uh, to go and, uh, uh, and pursue their career in Saudi Arabia. So it's, uh, it looks like there is a kind of an exchange um, uh, program. So we go there, we get training, they got, they get training they over there and then they come and practice in Saudi Arabia. So it is uh, something that uh, we can uh, always uh, pursue. So everybody kind of look for whatever uh, serve uh, him or her uh, best. Uh, so uh, 
it, so when I uh, get when I got back to to Canada, uh, this is one of the uh, live lectures that uh, I attended in preparation for the USMLE. So the USMLE is the examination that you take after uh, step one after uh, first year, and then step two, uh, uh, the, sorry, step one after the basic sciences. So either year uh, four or year five. And then uh, the uh, the uh, residence, the um, uh, USMLE step two, which you you take after the uh, sixth year after you finish uh, all the clinical sciences. So this is, was after one of the live lectures that we took in internal medicine in uh, Toronto. After I got, after I did my examination, uh, the acceptance was a bit uh, difficult. So. Um, the um, uh, I had to go back to Saudi Arabia, uh, and and my situation was a bit uh, tricky at that time because I kind of wasted, uh, if you can call it a waste. Uh, I I spent two years uh, trying to pursue uh, residencies in in between Canada and the United States, but I could not get. Uh, the uh, acceptance until 2011. So I had to go back to Saudi Arabia. I was considering uh, getting the acceptance in in, uh, in the local uh, program. But then the, the Saudi uh, cultural mission to the United States, um, represented by uh, Dr. Samar al-Saggaf, actually was cooking and establishing good relationship with multiple uh, hospitals and multiple uh, residency programs in the United States. So she was able um, to make an affiliate to make affiliations with multiple residency programs in the United States, which was unusual at that time. The the residency program in, in the United States is highly competitive, especially when you're talking about a, a specialty of emergency medicine, or if you go to uh, surgical specialties or uh, dermatology or ophthalmology, these are a bit uh, tricky and, and very hard to, to get. So Dr. Samar Sagaf did a great uh, job uh, in terms of securing uh, affiliations uh, with the uh, with the support of the Ministry of uh, Education and uh, the Saudi uh, Cultural Mission in the United States, so she was able to uh, provide um, uh, affiliations. So we, as a Saudi uh, citizen, we were able to go to the United States to uh, to pursue residency. So in, instead of, for example, having uh, uh, 13 residents in the um, in, in a certain program, they were uh, like, you know what, listen, why don't you uh, increase the number of acceptance between uh, instead of 13, uh, 12 residents or 13 residents to make a 13 or 14. And then we will uh, try to make um, some sort of uh, an agreement between us so uh, you can increase the capacity of the acceptance. So I moved to the um, uh, United States. I, we I went uh, for a an interview uh, in University of uh, uh, Maryland in, in Baltimore. And then I was able to, uh, I, I got the offer to, uh, to come and, and do my, my residency in the, in the United States. Um, so Baltimore is a city that is located, is the largest city in Maryland, uh, and it is about an hour away from Washington, D.C. It is well known uh, for uh, uh, the uh, degree of uh, violence and, and drugs. Um, uh, so when you go and pursue residencies in the United States, you are required um, to get a uh, social security number, which is uh, something equivalent to the Saudi national uh, ID. Uh, but the thing is, you get that one because you are going to get paid by the hospital that you are uh, working uh, in. So in order to uh, work, in order to get a permit uh, to work, you're supposed to get an, a social security uh, number. Uh, and it is because uh, because you're not a you're not you're not a U.S. We, we are not U.S. citizens. Uh, you're only applied. Uh, this only work for uh, for work uh, visa and under the, the Department of Homeland Security. Uh,
security. So um, as you can, uh, as you probably know, the, the, the weather in the United States is uh, uh, is uh, really good. The environment is uh, really nice. Um, this uh, photo was taken a bit, uh, at, uh, j just next to the Saudi cultural mission in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is an example of uh, what uh, Saudi uh, scholarship students actually used to uh, park in front of the cultural mission. Uh, because we had a uh, good uh, salary from the university uh, or the residency program, in addition to a salary that was paid by the Saudi cultural uh, mission, we were able to uh, live a, a luxury life. Uh, so I moved to Baltimore. Uh, I rented an apartment uh, very uh, near to the hospital that I, I worked uh, at. Uh, and then uh, the, the visa that you are required to get is a J1 visa. The J1 visa is different from an F1 visa. The F1 visa is an, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a visa that allow you to, uh, to work. F1 visa is the visa to allow you to study. So this is one of the uh, things that uh, uh, made me a little bit under uh, uh, pressure. Uh, well, because Every time you get a visa, you uh, uh, you have to you, you're only getting a one year uh, visa. So that was a little bit of uh, a tough uh, time because every time the visa expires and and you want to go uh, back home, for example, for a, a vacation, uh, you're supposed to renew the visa. And and I told you before that I had some difficulties with uh, uh, with the visa, but that was in in Canada. So that was just a, a little bit of uh, uh, a problem at that time. Um, so I did my uh, residency in uh, in emergency medicine. This is a, a sample for uh, of my uh, uh, schedule at that time. Uh, in when when I was uh, a, a junior, uh, when I was a, a junior uh, uh, resident, uh, I, I used to take twelve hour uh, shift. Uh, and 18, 18 shifts, each shift is a 12 hour shift. So, so the shift start at uh, 7 a.m. and it ends at, uh, at 7 p.m. and then the night shift start at 7 uh, p.m. and then ends at uh, uh, so, uh, uh, 7 a.m. So uh, an example of uh, the uh, rotations that we used to take, so pediatric anesthesia with oromaxillofacial, and then uh, uh, elective, and then at Mercy Hospital, University, and then something called X-Man, which is uh, when you take it uh, as uh, a night shift the whole uh, month, a trauma rotation with uh, Team A. So, um, and then you work to, uh, in, a, in a community hospital, and then you go back to university um, emergency uh, department, and then another community hospital, and then also a third community hospital and then a hospital that is called uh, uh, Prince George's County. So it is at uh, 13 uh, uh, blocks, 12 months, 13 blocks. Uh, each one is uh, a four week uh, 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 block. So it was a bit difficult for uh, uh, me to adopt uh, because I was born and raised in, in, uh, in uh, Al Medina, um, it is a bit uh, difficult uh, to kind to kind of adapt uh, to the system. However, it's not it's not impossible. Um, uh, th th this is uh, King Fahad uh, Hospital in uh, sorry King Fahad uh, uh, Mosque in uh, Los Angeles, uh, which is uh, one one of the, I think it it is the biggest uh, uh, mosque in in California. Um, uh, uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, Manhattan, Lower Manhattan in, in New York. Um, the uh, Under the Statue of Liberty, uh, it is written, give me your tired, uh, your poor, your huddled, masses uh, yearning to uh, breathe free. Uh, uh, the rich refuse to, uh, of your uh, teeming shore. Uh, the idea here uh, is that... Um, United States, uh, they are welcoming anyone who just want to start new. They don't care what is your background. They don't care 
uh, what's happening to you. And this is uh, their uh, message. Um, they are depending on foreigner uh, to participate in the development of the of the country. Um, in uh, uh, you, you can practice your own uh, uh, religious. Uh, 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 practices. Uh, this is a picture uh, taken uh, of me in, in uh, Eid al-Adha, uh, where we went to a farm uh, south in, in Virginia, where uh, we were given the uh, option to uh, slaughter our sheep. Um, uh, this is what in, in the time of uh, when the Ebola uh, came out and then the uh, training for uh, that. And uh, this is a picture of me. Um, uh, photoshopped into an Armageddon uh, poster. The 4th of July was a, a really nice um, event to celebrate. Uh, when I was uh, doing the, the residency, my, my parents used to come and visit me. And every time um, my mother, Allah Rahamha, uh, she would ask, uh, what do you want me to bring from uh, Saudi Arabia? So I, I kind of really missed uh, the uh, food. So they would uh, uh, bring uh, the Tamiz bread. So the question is, why American uh, uh, or whether should you uh, pursue American or, or Saudi board? Well, uh, the experience may not uh, fit everybody. Okay. What probably going to fit you is not going to fit uh, people who uh, did it. You might want to pursue residency in emergency uh, medicine. You want you may want to pursue residency in, in ophthalmology. Um, whatever ex other people experience may not apply to you. So you want you, you, you really want to uh, uh, be sure that uh, that you learn from other people experience. Okay, but you need to uh, make sure that it it suits you. Um, uh, if you think that you uh, you fit, you might not fit. You might actually excel in another uh, area. You might want to do uh, something better, or not necessarily better, maybe something different, and it's not available in the United States. It might be that you want to pursue something in the United States, but not there. So. Uh, these are uh, three of my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Fadi Rif is a consultant cardiology, uh, heart failure transplant. He, is, uh, uh, he did his residency in internal medicine, cardiology, and then heart failure transplant in uh, between Ohio and uh, uh, Michigan. And this is Dr. Uh, Anas uh, Khalil. He did his uh, residency in Massachusetts uh, for internal medicine and then pulmonary critical care in uh, San Diego, California. We all came back uh, currently. He is working at uh, Taiba University. I'm working at, Nas at National Guard. And then uh, Dr. Fadi is working at King uh, Faisal. So uh, it is, we, we, uh, we cannot hide that uh, sometimes uh, this uh, used to happen in the past uh, where uh, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities may uh, be given for either uh, people with uh, certain backgrounds or certain qualifications and a bit of difficulties can face you in uh, certain areas. Uh, things have actually changed and uh, I came back to work at uh, uh, National Guard uh, uh, Hospital. Uh, uh, the, the thing with uh, doing the residency in the United States is that one of them is uh, uh, getting uh, exposed to uh, a variety of cases. So one of them is actually uh, doing a ED thoracotomy, uh, for example, on a regular uh, basis. Um, doing ED thoracotomy on a regular basis in a, in a city like Baltimore uh, is a very uh, a frequent thing because of the, all of the of the violence that uh, we used to see there. So, um, whatever the resources that you have, um, if if you don't use it wisely, you probably are not going to achieve uh, uh, the goal. So, it is a matter of. Uh, organizing and utilizing your resources uh, very wisely and uh, absorb as much as possible uh, of the resources that you can uh, get and get it into a streamlined uh, 
uh, approach so you can suck up all uh, the uh, benefit or potentially the harm that you can uh, get. Everything that uh, works uh, here would work there. Uh, not, not everything that would work there would work here, but we have some uh, common uh, ground. Uh, beware of uh, people who are uh, trying to pretend uh, to help you and they are trying and, and maybe they are trying to, to harm you or they have the capabilities of helping you but then uh, they they don't want to which is the minority of people a lot of uh, a lot of people when they give advice they give advice uh, out of lack of uh, knowledge and then they can miss uh, lead you into something that uh, may not uh, suit you uh, the thing is, and the question is, what do you want? Do you want to pursue uh, residency in the United States just because you want to pursue the residency in the United States? Is it something that you have been dreaming about? Or is it something that um, uh, does not matter? Uh, do you uh, even, can you guarantee uh, uh, getting accepted in the United, in, in the residency in, in Saudi Arabia? Or can you get uh, the, the residency as a backup? Um, uh, the residency in the United States as a backup, right? Um, you, you always want to ask someone who has gone through the experience, learn from their experience, but don't apply it necessarily 100% uh, to yourself. If you uh, have uh, met a, a someone who actually went uh, through that, the same experience that you are anticipating on going through, uh, maybe that person is going to uh, help you uh, a lot. So it does not matter. Uh, they, they always uh, say in investment, uh, an, invest an investment saying, say, uh, 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 an, an investment uh, old saying uh, states that uh, the best time to start your investment was 15 years ago. The second best time is actually now. Uh, even if you, uh, let's say that you did not uh, know about uh, USMLE or pursuing residency in the United States um, three years ago, four years ago. You did not know about it until uh, today. It's okay. Sometimes if you start uh, a bit uh, late, you might have actually a rebound uh, uh, a, a rebound uh, uh, and a better uh, outcome because of uh, of all of the the stress that you are uh, in right now. Um, uh, so what? How do you how do you uh, pursue this one? Okay, you uh, want to focus on uh, taking the USMLE as soon as uh, possible. What's the current situation right now? So the Ministry of Higher Education in 2002-2003 was targeting certain uh, uh, specialty at that uh, time. Uh, the, 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 uh, the website of the Ministry of uh, Education right now, uh, this is a picture taken of the uh, uh, website uh, today. So they, uh, they actually, uh, if you uh, click on the medical program uh, link, you actually can see that the registration is uh, closed for uh, that. So the affiliations with uh, American universities and American residency programs is not as it used to be in 2003, between 2003 and uh, I think all the way to 2014. Uh, however, uh, the Ministry of Education actually have launched uh, and the, the, the new, um, uh, their, their new approach, which is uh, what they call it, uh, so the, the market actually have uh, changed. The requirement for, uh, the, the requirement to actually uh, secure uh, uh, scholarship to, to, uh, to, to a scholarship abroad is actually uh, changing with the market uh, demand. So uh, this is, by the way, uh, only uh, it, it is in, in public relation, economy, human resources, national security, uh, sports, and then media, um, criminal justice, and, and so forth. So it might not actually uh, suit us as uh, current physician, because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that if I am giving this lecture to our 
resident to to, uh, to to the audience i'm assuming that we have either medical students or uh, uh, interns or or uh, uh, residents who are either pursuing this the residency in the, uh, here in, in saudi arabia or uh, potentially doing a service job uh, waiting for either getting accepted in into a residency program in the uh, here in saudi arabia or in uh, abroad in the united states so um, let's talk about the uh, current situation so the resident salary and this is per, this is the yearly income uh, before uh, deducting the uh, taxes so it is 50 uh, five uh, thousand in in 2015 that went up uh, to 60,000 per year. So when you say per year, that means uh, this is uh, 60,000 divided by 12 uh, months. When you when you do that and then you deduct the income tax, you end up with uh, probably 30, 35,000 uh, after deducting uh, taxes. So you probably can get between uh to uh 2700 or 3000 uh dollars per month and that equals to 10000 reals so so uh 10000 reals or uh, or 3000 dollars is what the american uh, residents uh the, the american citizens are uh, getting uh without any support from the saudi the saudi cultural uh, mission when I was a resident, I used to take this salary from the university in addition to uh, a generous uh, support from the uh, Saudi Cultural Mission, the Ministry of Higher uh, Education, giving uh, additional uh, $2,000. So I, that's why I told you before that I used to live a luxury life. Uh, I'm, I'm saying this because whether you can pursue or secure the residency uh, or do the residency program in the United States, whether you do it under the umbrella of and the support of Ministry of uh, uh, Education or you do it alone, you are still going to get paid because you're going to get social security number and uh, salary and you are allowed uh, to work over there. So what is the situation right now with the international medical graduates? What's the definition of international medical graduates? International medical graduate are any person, whether a, a US uh, American citizen or a non-US American citizen who did their medical school outside uh, the, the uh, North America. So uh, this is a percentage of uh, people who got uh, matched in uh, residency program in the United States. In 2012, the medical uh, uh, graduate, the US, uh, uh, th this is the, the, the US uh, medical uh, graduate who graduated from your residencies outside uh, the, uh, the North America. So for example, let's take 2012. Uh, the, there are some people who uh, are American citizen who did not were not able to pursue their medical school or do their medical school in uh, in one of the American uh, college, right? And uh, they they could not do their uh, medical school, so they they had to go, for example, to the Caribbean. They had to go to uh, a medical school that. Uh, they can get accepted in, whether uh, less uh, fees or or whatnot. These are uh, the the green uh, bars represent the non-US uh, international medical graduates. So you can actually see that uh, the comp the competition between American uh, uh, the medical students or American medical graduates. And the non-American medical graduates is actually kind of like neck to neck. And then all the way to in, in 2020, even the, the non-US medical graduates actually uh, uh, passed the US uh, international medical graduates. Uh, the, the friendly uh, top, I, uh, top international medical graduates friendly uh, by numbers, you can actually see that New York uh, probably is taking the lead uh, in terms of the, the state. So uh, New York, Michigan, Florida, Pennsylvania, and, and then so, so forth, all the way down to Missouri. I did my residency in, in, 2000 and, in 2011. Uh, so 
that was in Maryland. So it uh, uh, by by numbers, you are actually seeing that in New York, for example, more than uh, almost 1,500 uh, uh, medical graduates, international medical graduates, were able to uh, to secure a residency program in New York. And you have other options as well. Um, so by by percentage, for example. Uh, it is okay to compare it by number and then uh, compare it by, by percentage. For example, in Wyoming, you can actually see that uh, it's uh, uh, close, more than uh, half of the residency uh, seat were actually given to uh, residency uh, uh, program, uh, from, graduated from international medical schools. The, the specialty that you probably can get, the most uh, common uh, one, and, and probably I should say in, in between an air quotation, uh, in, in internal medicine. So more than 3,000 uh, medical graduates actually were able to uh, get matched in internal medicine. And once you, you match in internal medicine, the fellowship probably can, be, can, can get like really easier at that, at that time. You can actually see uh, that uh, the latest uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, statistics about emergency medicine is not as good as internal medicine. So if you are thinking about, uh, for example, uh, matching in internal medicine uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the United States, your, your chance is really, uh, your chance is really high uh, if you think about internal medicine versus when you think about neurology, for example, or, uh, or emergency medicine or anesthesia. Okay, even emergency medicine is even more competitive than uh, surgery. Uh, if you if you take a look at it by uh, by this perspective, uh, so uh, percentage wise, uh, you can actually see that uh, pathology has been occupied by uh, and taking the lead here, right? So again, uh, you can actually see internal medicine uh, in in the top uh, five. Uh, and then you can see the other uh, specialty as well. Uh, so the match rate for the U.S. medical school seniors. So, for example, if you are a U.S. citizen or a non-U.S. citizen, it does not matter. It does not. The citizenship does not matter. What matters is if you graduate from a medical school in the United States, your chance of getting accepted in United States is actually close to 100%. Um, the, compare that to what's happening uh, uh, right here uh, with 6,000 applicants, for example, applied for the Saudi Commission for the Saudi Board, and then only 50% are getting uh, the, the acceptance. So it, with this, if you are a U.S. medical school graduate, right, it, it does not matter the, the nationality. Well, most of the time they are... Uh, uh, American citizens, but if you are a graduate from medical school in the United States, your chance of getting accepted is 94. If you are from an, if you are an international medical graduate, again, it does not matter if you are a U.S. citizen, for example, born in the United States or uh, acquired the citizenship uh, or, or some uh, way, but you graduated from an international medical school, anything outside North America. Uh, then your uh, match rate is going to range between 5% only all the way to 60%, depending on the specialty. For example, 5%, we're talking about like the competitive uh, specialty. Uh, it is very unlikely uh, to get matched, uh, for example, in dermatology or ophthalmology in the United States. However, it's not impossible, right? Uh, you, can, you can do uh, a lot of uh, things that uh, can boost your, your application uh, process. So now the question is, do I uh, search uh, for the right uh, state to apply in? Do I apply in uh, New York, for example, or do I apply in Maryland or do I apply in Michigan or what or what do I uh, how do I apply uh, and what is the right specialty to apply to? Why not apply to everything? Why can I uh, just apply for all the residency and all the specialty and then see how it goes? Well, the answer is each application actually is going to is going to take money. You are uh, required to pay uh, an application fee. So if you apply, for example, for 200 programs, it's different when you apply for 10 programs, right? You might actually spend 
multiple uh, thousands of uh, dollars just in application fees if you apply uh, for multiple residency uh, program, multiple uh, specialty, and you apply for, uh, uh, and then after that, when you are invited for an interview, well, I don't know what the, what's the situation right now for COVID since everything is being done uh, virtually, but even the uh, flying is going to cost you a lot of money. So not everybody apply for all this. Uh, I, I don't think there is anyone who would apply for all the specialty and then uh, and then goes to all the, the interviews. So what is required from uh, you? Because b before we, uh, we even talk about the application, well, we need to talk about what is uh, the situation that you want to do next. So the, what you want to do, uh, it depends on your uh, level right now. So you need to keep these your goals, taking the USMLE exams, okay? So the USMLE examination are uh, three steps. Step one is uh, an MCQ uh, uh, based uh uh, examination and then the USMLE step two which is CK and CS so the CK is the clinical knowledge which is similar to uh, step one uh, USMLE step uh, uh, two is also an examination that is an MCQ a nine hour long examination uh, but then you will you want to take uh, something called the clinical skills which is the CS Okay, so the clinical knowledge um, you want for you, you go for an MCQ examination, and then uh, for the clinical skills you actually do some sort of an OSCE examination or uh, uh, an examination that you want to do as uh, the, uh, the, uh, to practice it on a standardized uh, patient, so actors. And then USMLE step three uh, is not actually required uh, to get into residency. It is uh, probably required later on when you finish your residency. So don't worry about USMLE step three for now. The other thing that you probably can start doing, which is uh, the hands-on uh, clinical experience or a, a clinical experience in general in North America, with a, preferably if you can do it in United States. So the difference between hands-on and observership uh, uh, clinical experience is that when you do a hands-on clinical experience, you actually can go and function as uh, a full uh, clinician, meaning you are allowed to attend uh, rounds, for example. You are allowed to attend clinical shifts, for example. You are allowed to go and uh, speak to uh, uh, patients, examine the patient, present your cases, uh, discuss it. Uh, and sometimes in, in certain uh, hospitals, you can probably even uh, order a certain investigation that you can uh, do. The difference between this and the observership is that you don't have any of that. Observership is a clinical experience, okay? But it's not the full hands-on uh, experience, meaning you are not allowed uh, to uh, talk to patients. You are not allowed to examine patients. Sometimes you are not allowed even to see patients, uh, but, but you probably can attend the discussion that happens uh, between the, the consultant physician, attending physician, and uh, the resident who uh, already has seen the patient and discussing the case. So why I'm bringing this up, why I'm bringing the hands-on and observership, because hands-on experience is a bit uh, tricky to get. You have some certain requirement uh, that you need to, to get, and it is a bit difficult uh, to do. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, pay uh, uh, certain uh, fees, which, which might be higher than observership. But anyway, both of these are a good thing that uh, uh, at, at least it's something to kind of get hooked up with uh, uh, people who are making the decisions in accepting um, uh, uh, new candidates every year. Uh, if you work with, for example, um, the program director, the residency program director of an internal medicine in a hospital in Michigan, then you will know that person. You will get an, a recommendation letter. Um, when you apply there, uh, that person might know you. Uh, and then um, you can, they can actually tell that, oh, you know what, we worked with uh, Muhammad, for example, and, and he's, uh, he's a good guy. He has the potential of becoming a, a good uh, resident. So uh, to sum up, 
what you need to do right now is read more about the USMLE examination, okay? Prepare for the USMLE uh, step one if you are in the basic uh, science years. And then prepare for the USMLE step two clinical knowledge, the CK, if you are in the clinical years. Because the question is, can you take step one? Uh, do you have to take step one before step two? Uh, or can you have can you take step two before uh, step one? Well, the answer is yet uh, to be determined because what I did from my personal experience, I actually took step two CK before step one, uh, and then I got an even an interview when I did my uh, US Middle step two uh, CK examination. Uh, so I did it kind of backwards. So I did step two first, and then I did step one. And then I went back and, and took uh, clinical skills. And after I completed my residency, I did uh, the step three. Uh, step three was required from me to take because uh, you cannot do, you cannot sort of sit for the American board uh, examination before uh, that. So, uh, and I did the, the hands-on clinical experience. It was not in the United States, but it was in North America. So, so Canada uh, and University of Toronto is one of the, uh, one of 